Hello, hi, and welcome to another video right here on Life with Mbali. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for tuning in to yet another video. And if this is your first time on my channel, welcome. Please do remember to hit the subscribe button. I'm very excited to have you on my channel, so I hope you stay. And before I do get into the video, I just want to say thank you so much to everyone who has been engaging with my content over the last few weeks. In a world where there's just an oversaturation of content, the fact that you guys stopped and took time out of your days, out of your diaries, just to engage with my content, either by watching it, by leaving a comment, by liking it, means so 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 much to me and especially because i am still in the building phase and still trying to grow this channel um i really really appreciate the fact that you've taken time out of your schedules out of your days just to listen to what i have to say so i hope that you continue to do that and i hope that we grow this community over the next few months so I decided to come on the channel today to chat to you about a few things that I've been thinking about recently. And all these things have one thing in common, and that is growth. And growth in relation to various aspects of my life. So growth in relation to my YouTube channel, for example. Growth in relation to the fact that I am turning 30 years old this year. And also growth in relation to my journey of singlehood. So I'll start with my YouTube channel. So I've been on YouTube since 2019 and my journey has been a very interesting. <laughs> I started in 2019. I didn't even have an idea of what it is that I wanted to achieve on this, on this channel. I think I only just had that desire to speak and to share my experiences on camera. And I did exactly that, but only for a brief period of time. And I think not having that crystallized vision of what it is that I wanted to achieve with my channel contributed to me not being as consistent and as focused um, when it comes to my YouTube. Then fast forward to, I think 2020, the beginning of the pandemic, I tried reviving the channel. It was around that craze where, you know, everyone was starting a podcast or starting a YouTube channel. And I remembered that, oh goodness, I have a YouTube channel that I've abandoned. Maybe I should revive that. And I tried doing that, but I think when I did that, I didn't anticipate like the toll that the pandemic would take on me. And once that hit me, I fell back into my slump. I could not put out any video. I could not bring myself to record anything. And that led to another period of abandonment on my channel <laughs> where I just completely ghosted this channel and didn't even consider coming back at some point. Then late last year, I decided to just take the plunge because up until I put out a video on the channel, I was literally thinking about YouTube every single day. I was thinking about the kind of content I'd like to have. I had all these ideas and it was just eating me up. It was eating me up every single day. The fact that I wasn't doing anything about those ideas. So eventually I got over just my obsession with perfectionism and decided to just come back on the channel with a very easy vlog, you know. And when I did that, I think I got back into the swing of things and I committed to reviving this channel and committed to my journey of creativity so i went away from focusing on you know just having an aesthetically pleasing channel with quality videos and you know the best content to honoring my journey of creativity so it became more about how can i make sure that i am expressing myself creatively and how can i use this platform to express myself in that manner and so when I think about growth in terms of my YouTube channel, that's honestly some of the things that I think about over and above the fact that I have had to be a student. I have had to humble myself to the process of creating, of putting myself out there, humbling myself to the process of not having control over 
how many views I get, how many subscribers I get, how many likes I get on my videos. Um, that has been a huge growth point for me. Sorry, I just had to drink some water. But yeah, as I was saying, YouTube has been a huge growth point for me. It's teaching me a lot about patience. It's teaching me a lot about being kind to myself and to just also trust my process. Trust my process of creativity and also trust the process that whatever results that I desire from being on this platform will come to fruition at some point. Um, it's teaching me a lot, a lot about humility in ways that I don't think anything else has. And I recently came across a tweet that was quoting Beyonce, where she was saying that people don't like rehearsing because rehearsing or practice makes them look awkward and it forces them to be humble. Um, I'm obviously paraphrasing the quote here, but I'll just put the tweet on the screen so that you're able to see. And yeah, that's exactly what it's been. I've been forced to be a student. I've been forced to be humble to this process and allow myself to learn, allow myself to look like I don't know what I'm doing, allow myself to start from the bottom, you know? And it has been as humbling as it has been rewarding um, because it is showing me a lot of where my development needs to still go um, just in terms of my creativity also just as a person and how I see myself and how I see the content that I put out there and yeah that's been one of the biggest lessons when it comes to growth and what growth can potentially look like on a platform like youtube it's not always just about the numbers you know it's not always just about the subscribers the likes the number of views it's also about the internal growth that you as a creative and as a creator of content um go through at a personal level and i'm i'm growing i'm growing and i like it <laughs> it's uncomfortable but i like it okay the other thing that i've been thinking a lot about in relation to growth is the fact that i am turning 30 years old this year and i am absolutely excited about it i literally think about my birthday every single day my birthday is only in six months by the way <laughs> but i'm excited i'm excited because i've only heard positive things from people who are on the other side of 30 and i can't wait to experience that for myself you know i'm not anxious i'm not worried i'm not stressed i'm not living in a space of regret um because that tends to happen you know when you turn older you think about all the things that you could have done and you should have done and 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 i think i had a phase of that in my 20s i had a phase of you know living in regret in my 20s one of those, if I knew better, I would have done better. But in the same breath, that very same statement has been the thing that's liberated for me. Because truly, if I had known better at the time, I definitely would have done better. And that's why I don't live my life in regret, or at least I don't try to live my life in regret. And I don't want to go into my 30s with that mindset either, you know. So... I'm feeling very excited because my 20s were a lot about unlearning. There was a lot of unlearning, unlearning societal expectations, expectations from friends, from families, and unrealistic expectations at that. And really just truly defining what being happy and what I want and what a good life looks like for me, you know. So I'm on the tail end of my 20s and I'm hoping to take all of those lessons of unlearning and relearning and to apply them in my 30s. So I'm looking forward to that. I really, really am. I think 30 is a big age. It's not a old age. I think it's big because it's big. It's 30. It's three decades of being alive. <laughs> um, while it's not old, it's not old. I do think that... Um, 
there is a level of responsibility that comes with being that age you know and a level of responsibility that comes with having learned some things along the way and having unlearned some things and truly knowing better and doing better because of that so i'm looking forward to a decade of just goodness of just living life fully and living life in the most authentic and fulfilling ways um, and seeking people and experiences and places that remind me of that and that fill me up in that way and truly just going after what I want you know being relentless relentless in going after the things that I want not holding back and to just continue living from a place of intentionality and to live on purpose that is what I want my 30s to look like um, obviously with some money not some a whole lot of money an abundance of money thank you very much <laughs> to make those dreams a reality we need prosperity to flow into our space into the bank account we need prosperity okay so yeah i am looking forward to it and like i said i mean it's only in six months but it's literally something that i think about every day because i want to sit and live in that intention of just creating a life that feels good that not only looks good but feels good that is full of abundance in every possible and positive aspect so yeah here's to turning 30 in six months <laughs> and then the last thing that i've been thinking about in relation to growth has to be my journey of singlehood i think i learned something new about being single every single week okay <laughs> every single week is a new lesson on being single and how to navigate singlehood as a young black woman and it's been a very interesting ride i mean i've been single since 2019 i've had like a few non-committal things in between but nothing significant to have transpired into a relationship um and this is the longest that i've been single in my life oh. and it's been very very interesting but i'm at a point in my singlehood where i've accepted that my self-love does not negate my need for companionship and also that the lack of companionship in my life in a romantic sense is not a reflection of my value is not a reflection of my self-worth it just is you know and it's been very interesting guys like singlehood has just shown me so much that i still am learning about myself and it is actually preparing me for this new decade that i'll be going into in a few months you know and more than anything it's made me prioritize myself and choose myself over and over and over again and you can never go wrong when you choose yourself when you choose yourself you honor yourself when you choose yourself you don't betray yourself and i can never go wrong with something like that i can never as much as i may make mistakes here and there as much as i may choose the wrong guy here and there um at the end of the day i always walk away from situations knowing that i deserve better and knowing that i chose myself and that for me is very important so yeah i'm at a point in my singlehood where i am so detached to the outcome of my romantic engagements i'm actually not even engaging at this point i just don't have the bandwidth guys i don't have the patience i don't have the bandwidth and just men are honestly not that interesting <laughs> they are perpetually underwhelming and i'm not willing to put myself out there for basicness like basic 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 things i'm just not you know 
um i i value me i value my time my mind my body my energy too much and as i've said before as much as you know you may choose the wrong guy here and there once you do come to that realization that something doesn't work for you you get back up dust yourself off and you keep it moving and you become proud and be proud of the fact that you chose yourself and you were able to also just wake up from from whatever it is that you were in and and you chose yourself um yeah every time i think about singlehood for me right now i think of that song i'd rather be alone than be A fool, ooh, a fool for love. Cause I know I'd rather be, be alone than be, be unhappy. <laughs> and you know what? We were singing this song as kids, not knowing what it meant. And a trust at 29 years old, I know exactly what that means because that's exactly how I feel. And that brings me to the end of today's video. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you have tuned in until this point, then you are a real one. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend about life with Mbali. I will see you on the next video. Bye-bye.